name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. How are you? You're a good-looking bunch. Have you noticed that about the flame of love? It makes you prettier. It's the best cosmetic in the world. Hallelujah. Well, I just got back from Peru, from Lima, and I'm recovering from some food poisoning right now. So I'm doing pretty good, though. I'm standing up, eh? And I ate my dinner, and it didn't come back at me. So I'm actually doing better, and Father John also has a healing ministry, and he prayed over me, so I'm going to be fine. Amen? And see, that's how we win graces for the kingdom. Amen? We got to send out the flame of love uh, through our prayer, but also through our sacrifices. See, we forget that, don't we? Because I love the flame of love prayers. I know you do too. We love that prayer. And we enjoy it so much, we forget that we got to send out also sacrifices with the prayers. Amen? Amen? Friends, let's say this. Say this after me. Oh, blessed lady, oh, blessed lady. spread the effect of grace. Of thy flame of love, of flame of love. Over, all of over all of humanity. O blessed lady, o blessed lady. Spread, the spread the effect of grace, of thy flame of love, of flame of love. Over, all of over all of humanity. And one more time, O blessed lady, o blessed lady. spread the effect of grace, of, grace. of thy flame of love. Over all of humanity. humanity. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Well, we were preaching in Lima and other parts of Peru the last three weeks. And I try to go down there every summer with the permission of my superiors. And we passed out 5,000 Flame of Love Unity prayers all throughout Lima and other parts of Peru. Isn't that beautiful? And we instructed all of them. We had healing masses across Lima and other places, we instructed them to try to say it at least twice a day. To say it when you get up for you and your family, but then ask them to say it a second time for Peru to protect their country. You know that, don't you? If enough of us say the prayer, it blinds the devil from seeing Pennsylvania or the whole country. Not just from our families, we can blind him from the country. Amen? Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, And by the way, just a little aside, I shouldn't go into this in any detail, but a little bit of an aside. I remember when our current pro-life president was elected, the night of the election and afterwards, and all the commentators who were so flabbergasted, I don't know why. I mean, anyone who actually lived in the Holy Spirit knew who was going to be elected. He told all of us in advance. But anyway, what I heard from all those who were so surprised, I kept hearing these words. We were blinded. 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 All of them were saying the same thing. We were blinded. You bet you were blinded. By the flame of love, you were blinded. It's true. Didn't you hear the same thing? It's amazing, actually. So we have the capacity to blind the evil spirit from our families and from the country. So our our lady is looking for a worldwide conversion. So the graces we're receiving are not only for ourselves, and that's important, but we need to jack it up a little bit now, bump it up higher, begin praying for all of the United States of America. Amen? Amen? So, beloved, we also have to use a bit of prudence. And so here's something that occurred while I was there. I'll get down closer to you. I won't scare you, will I? Okay. (laughs) <laughs> it's okay to use a little bit of wisdom too you know what I mean a little bit of prudence prayer and prudence together 
So we decided to contact one of the bishops of Lima, because we met with him last year, and he gave us the most beautiful blessing, the most beautiful embrace. So we came to see him again, and we finally got through to him our last day there. But that's okay, because I wanted to show him what we were doing in our healing masses, spreading the flame of love. And I explained to the good bishop our experiences in Georgia, when we had a couple of ladies, uh, two different masses, who seemed to be possessed by demons, who stood up at the end of mass and began screaming and manifesting, and how I had my team circle around them and we said the unity prayer for the poor lady who was so out of control, screaming and spitting and foaming at the mouth and all of that. It happened in the time of the apostles and it happens today. Amen? Amen. In fact, it'll probably start happening even more in the months and years to come. Well, I had them say the unity prayer because I wanted to test it. You see what I mean? And, you know, my daddy was a lawyer and a judge, so he had kind of a scientific mindset. So I learned from my daddy to test things logically. So I thought, wow, this is the brilliant opportunity to test that prayer. I got a lady out of control, and let's give it a try. You see what I mean? So I had them circle around her. I mean, it's easier than calling the bishop for an exorcism, you know what I mean? I don't need to call the bishop to say that prayer. Anyone can say that prayer. You get, you get my drift? It was easier. So I had them gather around her and we prayed, and as you might know the story, screaming and foaming and spitting and speaking in an unknown language. As we said that prayer, my adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together, may our hands gather in unity. Isn't that beautiful, that prayer? Our souls be in harmony, our hearts beat in unison, our glances profoundly, all of that. As we said that, the woman with invisible hands came under control. And of course, not to go into too much detail, but from screaming and spitting and foaming in 60 seconds, her hands were driven like this. And she knelt in total silence and a certain pious reverence, a pious reverence, bowed her head to me to receive a priestly blessing. It was stunning and beautiful to see. So I explained that to the bishop. You know the first thing he said to me was, Father, I have a teenage boy who's possessed. Can you go give him exorcism right now? <laughs> so I got my first exorcism assignment in Peru. <laughs> and I saw him that night, the, the kid and his twin brother. And they were set free. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> you see, it's good, it's good to have a religion, the Catholic faith, the true church, the true religion, that is imbued with power. Amen? Amen. The Bible says in the final days you'll have a form of religion without power. Does that sound familiar? A form of religion. We don't want the form without the power. We don't want the power without the form. We want both together. Amen? Amen. And so the flame, like this, when you say flame, you think of power. The flame of love is, you might say, the power of love. We need a powerful religion because our church is under attack like never before in world history. Amen? Amen. First, we have to be fortified like Mary, a fortified tower like Mary, and then spread the grace to the whole world. But there is a victory coming soon. Amen? Amen? Well, to finish about Lima, as I spoke to Bishop Carlos there, I, I gave him that example. When I did, I noticed he grabbed from my hand 50 of the prayers and put them in his pocket right then. <laughs> it was so cute and so beautiful to see a, a, a bishop with childlike joy and faith. Amen? Amen. He put it in the, right then he took them. And I said, Bishop, what I'd like to do, with your permission, I want to give you more of these cards. We passed out 5,000. He said, thank you. So I want to give you 5,000 more. Can I do that this weekend? He said, yes. So I called today. They were delivered today. All five, he got 5,000 more for his churches. <laughs> and I might need your help. We'll talk about this later in the weekend. I said, but, you know, Lima is a Catholic city. I forget the population. I don't know what it is. Maybe 14 million people, 95% Catholic. I think it's 98% Catholic. So I asked the bishop, can I give you one for every Catholic in your diocese? <laughs> he said, Father, I accept. <laughs> so I'm going to need your help. Maybe we'll take up a second collection later in the weekend. 
Let's get the bishop at least one million. Ooh, baby, I'm getting the Holy Spirit right now. Let's get him one million prayer cards. Can we do that? Will you help me? One million. And we're going to blind the devil from Peru. Our Lady loves Peru. You know, when you leave the international airport in Lima, when you leave that airport, and you go down the main drag into this, it's a huge city. It takes us like an hour just to get to where we're staying in Lima. When you go down the main drag there to the entrance to the airport is a gigantic statue of Our Lady of Mount Carmel on public property, <laughs> built by the city. Amen? Huge. It would, it would easily fit in there. You see, it's a huge statue of Our Lady with the scapular, the brown scapular, at the entrance to the city and the international airport. So you know that Satan wants to destroy Peru, doesn't he? He wants to destroy that country. It's one of the few that's remained faithful to the Catholic faith. But the devil's trying to make inroads, and we're trying to protect that country from what he's trying to do. We're going to get two steps ahead of him. Amen? Amen. Now, I want to tell you, too, that here, I have more good news for you. I have the great joy of giving spiritual direction to uh, many religious, to priests and holy nuns, and I work with Mother Teresa's sisters. They have a convent in Atlanta. So working with them, I talk about the flame of love, and I was so delighted when I was there with them a month ago for some special meetings. I joined them for Vespers. Part of their routine every day is they pray the unity prayer during their Vespers now, all the missions of charity in Atlanta, every day. Amen? <laughs> you know, that, that makes a difference. When you have holy, faithful, religious praying this prayer, it's going, it's going to make it a thousand times more powerful. Amen? Amen? So I was there, though, to have a meeting with Mother Prima. You know who that is? That's Mother Teresa's successor. So I sat with her with a beautiful meeting together, and I asked Mother General if I could give her a, a flame of love prayer card for all the missions of charity in the United States of America. Because I think they have 50 convents in our country and about 370 nuns. She said yes. I gave it, I had them in my bag, right then I gave them to her. <laughs> all of them now have them. They're now distributing right now. All the missionary charity will be praying it every day in our country, every single missionary charity in our country. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> but I figured when you got a tiger by the tail, keep going. <laughs> so I said, Mother, how many sisters do you have worldwide? <laughs> 5,000. I said, do they all know English? Yes. Can I give you 5,000? She said, yes. It's been approved now, so we're going to distribute 5,000 Flame of Love prayer cards to the Missions of Charity to pray in every convent in India and throughout the world, every day. Amen? So, Eileen, make a note of that. I'm going to need 5,000 Flame of Love prayer cards in English by the time I leave, okay? Then I'll work with the rest of the group to get some more in Spanish for Peru. Amen? Amen. Isn't God great? Yes. But now I want to share with you another praise report. This is more, I would say, even more mystical, more uh, of a phenomenon. But as I was picked up last night at the Philadelphia International Airport, can you imagine one day when we're leaving the Philadelphia International Airport and we're going down the main drag, a giant statue of Mary, the flame of love there? <laughs> Please, God, let's claim that. Let's claim it. Amen? Let's claim that for the future. Let's, let's do that. Let's pray to Hail Mary now that one day we have to be bold. As children. We're not the children of the devil. We're not the children of the world. We are the children of the living God. Amen? Amen? We are the sons and daughters of Mother Mary. Let's pray now, not one Hail Mary, not two, three. Three Hail Marys that one day through the Holy Spirit, a giant statue of Mary, the flame of love, we put at the entrance to the Philadelphia International Airport. Can we do that? Yes. Can we pray for that now? I think, you know, when you have the, an inspiration of the Holy Spirit, don't wait, jump on it. Let's pray three Hail Marys for that. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women 
and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity. And one more, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Our Lady of Good Success. Pray for us. Mary, flame of love. Mary, Mother of Victory. Pray for us. Beloved, you know what I discovered? I was down there in Peru. It's right next to Ecuador. In fact, I was supposed to fly there to Quito to be there at the shrine, but I got food poisoning. So there was a battle going on for sure. But listen, what, what I was doing some studying, I realized this, that what is the feast day for the Flame of Love, for Our Lady Flame of Love? Does anybody know the feast day requested by Our Lady in Ecuador for good success? Yeah. The same day! It's the same day! By a personal request of the Mother of God. How could that be unless there's a link there? From 500 years ago to today, she's saying the victory I promised on the 2nd of February, I will fulfill on the 2nd of February as well. Amen? Yeah. The flame of love fulfills Mary's promise to bring victory to the world. Amen? Amen. Mamma mia! <laughs> Mamma mia! It's the same day! By a special request of Our Lady. Both times she requested personally, she's going to crush that big old ugly head of Satan. She's going to crush it. Amen? Amen? Mama says, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. We've got to redouble our prayers now. All of us do, priests and people. Redouble your prayers now. Victory is coming. Amen? Amen. We've got to save as many souls as possible. Amen? Amen? Well, when they picked me up from the airport last night, a beautiful team from the Flame of Love, and we were driving through Philly, I became aware of something. The Lord has given me this special grace called the discernment of spirits. And I have to have it really for the healing ministry, in a particular way for the exorcism deliverance ministry, because I need to know what I'm dealing with. You know what I mean? I got to know whether it's one demon or 17. I got to know where he's coming from and what he's doing. The Lord has given me that special grace for a long time. Even when I was a teenager, my pastor would have me help him to do exorcism or deliverance, because I could see what he couldn't see. Isn't that amazing? I didn't know what was going on. I just knew I had these intuitions from daily mass. Well, I've been having them for a long time. Coming down the road, I felt something last night. And it's actually something positive. For the first time, as they were driving me from the airport to here to Malvern, I was aware of the flame of love in the air. For the first time, I could feel it. Oh, baby, I can feel those things. I know whether there's a devil or an angel right away. No, you see? I could feel the flame of love for the first time. You know, I've been out of Philadelphia a lot. First time I felt it. And I felt such a joy, like it's taking effect. You may not know it. This is the only city in the country where I felt it is here in Philadelphia, in this area, the only time. <laughs> and Our Lady wants you to know that you're going to see it. It's going to manifest in a, in a holy manifestation. You're going to see it. You're going to see the effects of her flame of love in this Philadelphia area. Amen? Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Oh, blessed lady, oh, blessed lady, spread the effect of grace, the effect of, grace. Of, thy of thy flame of love over all of humanity. Over all of humanity. Oh, blessed lady. 
spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity and over all of Pennsylvania, over all of New Jersey, over all of New York. Amen. And all the country, all the states of our country. Amen. See, Mama Beloved, remember there was a song when I was a teenager. You remember this one by Cat Stevens called The Peace Train? Wasn't that an awesome song? That, that, that boy had such passion and such zeal when he would sing. He could say, I could feel that, that peace train's coming. That peace train, ooh, I could feel it coming. Well, I'm going to tell you, I feel the joy train coming. I feel the victory train coming from the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Amen? Amen. It's chugging down the tracks. It's coming. And we are her instruments. The more that we pray, the quicker it comes. Amen? Amen. Remember those cowboy movies? And it'd be like a little tiny, like a platform on the railroad tracks. And there'd be one cowboy here, another cowboy there. And they go up and down like this. Yeah. That's, that's you and me with the flame of love. <laughs> Every time we say one of those prayers, we're going down and up and down. And you say it and I say it. You say it and I say it. We're bringing that victory train down the track. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mama says to tell you that every time you say it, it is heard. It, she hears you every single time. Don't think like, oh, she waits for like a thousand and then she hears you. No. Every time you say it, Mama has a teardrop of joy. Amen? Amen. Mama says, this is the plan. She first promised it there in Ecuador. Are they to good success? That she would bring an amazing, just, she says, when it appears that all is lost. She said, when it appears that our enemy has won. At that precise moment, she says, I will come down from heaven and my son and I will chain him, throw him into hell and convert the human race. Amen. <laughs> now, beloved, what to me is so intriguing about the, the flame of love, what's so intriguing to me is the Eucharistic nature of the flame of love. Mama said, Jesus is the flame of love, is Jesus. You know, I don't think we fully comprehend the divinity of Christ. Amen? Amen. How great he really is. He's truly great. He is divine. The Son of God is divine. And Mary says, he is the flame of love. It's of his nature to burn. It's of his nature to burn. God is a living God. You might as well say, God is a living flame. Amen? Amen? So God, while he is changeless, you might say, that's a theological term, it's true, and certain unchangeability. But what that really means is he's unchangeable in the burning nature of his being. He's always a flame. Amen? Amen? And that's why when he appointed his first choir of angels, the seraphim, the first choir, the greatest and the strongest, he made them flames of fire. Seraph means fire. The seraphim are flames of fire. And whenever they're seen, people see fire coming out from them. Sometimes they actually see a giant column of fire when they see the seraphim. Those are his closest allies, the seraphim, and they, like their master, they are living flames. Amen? So the Lord says, the Eucharist is my gift to transform my Catholic people into flames. Hallelujah. Pope Benedict said that the grace of the Mass, this grace of transformation, he said it's really is God's secret plan, that during the Mass, the Holy Spirit transforms bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus, the God-man. It's meant to transform you into a saint so you can transform the world. He said, that's the plan. It all goes back to the Mass. Amen. Amen. And Mama said in Fatima, she said that her triumph, the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, the triumph of Mary's flame of love will be the reign of the Eucharistic Heart of Jesus. Amen. Because when we say Mary, she says when we say Mary, she says, Jesus. No, when we say Mary, she says, Jesus. Oh, you sound like mosquitoes. <laughs> you should be eagles flying through the air, not mosquitoes. When we say Mary, what does she say? Jesus. 
When we say Mary, she says. Jesus. When we say Mary, she says. Jesus. And she says, Jesus, my son, I love you. Amen. Amen. She adores him and she loves him. Mary lives for Jesus to be exalted. Amen. Amen. I remember the fathers of the church had to fight some errors in their time, of course, heresies. Some not unlike some of the Protestant churches today. And some would argue with the fathers of the church, you put Mary too high, they would say. You put Mary too high. And the father said, no, we don't. We don't put Mary too high. You put Jesus too low. Amen. Oh, baby! <laughs> That's the reasoning of a saint, amen? amen? We don't put Mary too high. You put Jesus way too low, amen? amen. Think of it this way. As high as you can exalt Mary, Alphonsus Liguori said you could not praise her enough. You could not. Don't even worry about that. You couldn't. As high as you put Mary, and she deserves it, Jesus is at one billion times higher. So you have to put her high. If you don't put her as high as you can, you'll never have a clue how high Jesus is. Amen? Amen. You get my drift? Amen. You've got to put her high because the Lord is a billion times higher than that. If you don't put her high, you're putting Jesus in her place. But he's higher than that. Don't put him in her place. Put Mary in her place and put Jesus a billion times higher. Amen? Yeah. Do you realize that's what we receive and that's who we receive at Mass? We touch God. We touch God. Amen? Amen. Brothers and sisters, I was preaching at my own little church in Georgia a few days ago, and I challenged my people. I said, it sounds metaphorical, but it's actually more than a metaphor. We have to prepare for the Eucharist in such a way that when you and I and the priests and the deacons, when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ and he's placed on our tongue, whether it's with my own hand or the priest's hand, when that host touches my tongue, my tongue should burn. Our tongues should burn. Now, Our Lady says, ask her, she'll give you that grace. Ask her. Nevertheless, we're going to pray for that grace. It's not bread. It's the living God who is a flame of love. Amen? Amen. And everything's leading in that direction. Everything. The flame of love will touch. Now, can I be politically incorrect? Is that okay? I don't know where this tape is going to, so I probably won't get in trouble. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, every Muslim, every Buddhist, every Hindu, every Taoist, Every atheist, and yes, every Southern Baptist will be with us worshiping Jesus in adoration. Amen? Amen. They will be with us at the Mass worshiping Jesus. Amen. Amen. You see, the Lord deserves nothing less than every human heart bow down in loving appreciation and gratitude to Him. Amen? Amen? We have settled for far too little for far too long. Amen? We have a manifest destiny. Every human heart was made by God through Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit. All things were made through him. Amen? Amen. And he died for all mankind. He died for everyone. Even those in the Middle East, he died for them as well. His blood redeemed every sin of every human being from Adam to the last man on earth. Amen? Amen. And the Holy Spirit is meant to bring everyone into the sanctification the ultimate one being living in the divine will, the revelations of Luisa Picaretta, but living in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. It's not for some. It's for everyone. Amen? Amen? And so we have to remove the blinders from our hearts and souls and begin praying that every single person in the world is converted and saved. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Any questions, class? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the flame of love, beloved, will be present in Holy Communion today. Would you ask Our Lady now, we'll kneel down together in just a moment, for this grace, that when you receive the Lord, whether on your hand or on your tongue, you get burned tonight. Amen? Amen. It has to happen, you see, it has to happen. We are receiving something alive, more than alive, the source of all life. Amen? Amen? Let's pray for that grace that Mary experienced at every Mass, 
that Jesus, the true flame of love, will consume our sins and imperfections and inadequacies and make of us, as Malcolm Muggridge said about Mother Teresa, make of us something beautiful for God. Amen. Amen. Let's pray for that grace. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mary, Mother of the Church, pray for us. Mary, Mother of all souls, pray for us. Mary, Mother of eternal salvation, pray for us. Mary, Flame of Love, pray for us. Mary, Queen of Victories, pray for us. Good Saint Joseph, pray for us. all of you holy saints, pray for us. all of you holy angels, pray for us. and all of you holy souls in purgatory. May the divine assistance remain always with us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.